Okay, we have this 47-inch uh, LG TV, and as you can see, it's a common problem with these sets. The uh, actual picture and or the backlight is flashing on the screen. And just to verify the model number on this set, it's a 47LB. Larry Bravo 6100. There's also a 55 inch, 55 LB series, and a 60 inch LB series that uh, pretty much does the same thing. So now we're just going to proceed to uh, disassemble it and do our check ins. And uh, these are all what, where all the screws are located. There's two hidden screws on the bottom in those holes. Make sure you get those. And uh, this is a power supply board that I've showed you before use the same versions of this power supply board in between 47 inches and 60 inches we're concerned with the top line 47 inches we'll just go ahead and check our LED plus voltage should be 117 volts on each line there's actually two lines in this set each line has two strips they are marked on the top LED plus LED minus this is for you guys that don't have a um, LED checker so you want to make sure that we get kind of close or let's see what's going on here anyway so uh, the positive is the uh, blue wires LED plus Okay, I'll check my first line. It's reading approximately 88 volts. Okay. And I'll go to my other LED plus line and it's reading 130, 140. That's jumping around. So that's most likely our bad line with the bad LED on it. Uh, the return voltage is 38 volts approximately on the first line. Sort of jumping to and it's jumping because the pitch reaction is actually flashing on and off so and that one's a little bit high there it's like uh, 88 78 or whatever now we'll just use our LED checker and we'll check the uh, first line there uh, around 70 volts 69.9 volts and it is lighting up I can actually see it lighting up through the uh, back of the TV go to our second line and as you can see it is jumping around from 300 to 100 to 150 160 Okay, so that is definitely our bad line with our <coughs> bad LED on it. Or LEDs, right? Okay, so we just uh, take our uh, power button assembly off. It's just two screws, pretty easy. And then um, I'll just go ahead and disconnect our driver boards from our TCOM board, which is a habit that I do first. And that's how I disconnect it. And we'll also have to disconnect our speakers and pull them off because we want to get to that metal bracket on the bottom there. That are actually the bracket is actually covering the driver boards. Okay, the speakers are definitely marked left and right, so you won't get confused. So the bracket on, on the bottom there, um, there's like two screws on it. There's actually two brackets, one covering each driver board from left and the right side of the picture. Um, I actually have a number two Phillips that I actually um, <laughs> shaved <laughs> to fit those small screws. And um, so I'm just gonna remove the four screws right there on top 
those metal brackets. Now they won't come up because there are actually some screws on the bottom that's actually holding the brackets in also and holding in the bottom part of the outer bezel. So we also need to take those off to remove the two brackets. There's three black screws, one in the middle, one on each end. Okay. Now be careful, do not keep bending it. You don't want to damage the driver boards up underneath. There are actually some tabs on the outer part. Uh, as you can see, holding it in. Let's take a small screwdriver, just kind of pry them up and those should slide up pretty much easily. And as you can see there, now we uh, can see our left and the right driver boards. Those are directly connected to the panel. We do not want to break those ribbon, connect ribbon connectors or tear them or whatever. Just be careful. So now we're going to proceed to take our outer bezel off. There are some screws on the outside. You'll be able to see it um, on each side of the outer bezel. Uh, be careful not to, to strip them. They will strip pretty easily, especially if you do it like me. <laughs> I use my, uh, like I said, my little um, improvised number two Phillips bit. And as you can see, it looks like I actually stripped the first one because I wasn't applying enough pressure. Uh, if you do strip it, like I did, just get, get, get some pliers or something to go behind it and just turn it like that. Um, they're not screwed in that tight, so you can just turn it with the pliers or needle noses on the other side and it'll come right out. It is still stripped. So I'm just going to use my pliers and just unscrew it all the way out as much as I can. And then just grab it from that end and turn it. No big deal, right? That's the only one that got stripped. So I did remove all the screws on the outer bezel on all sides. And um, I just flip the TV set around and just pull the outer bezel comes right up as you can see now I want to proceed to take my screen off okay and I'm just going to always disconnect um, I'm just gonna like unlock the driver boards and um, there's some plastic clips up under there it's pretty much self-explanatory when you see it just kind of like pull one side of the clip up and the driver boards will lift right off be careful not to tip to, to tear the ribbon connectors or even crunch them
and as always I am actually going to take my driver board to the screen so I won't walk, walk past them and they won't get snagged and I'm going to use my little suction cups to pull the screen off I do recommend that you use some bigger ones um, but um, those are just fine there for, for right now and just move it over to the side make sure those driver boards are <clears throat> facing away from me so I will so I won't snag them and I'm just gonna put a little mark on the bottom left hand corner of um, put a little dot on the screen and also on the brackets holding the uh, diffuser screens in okay now those diffuser screens I will spread the light evenly uh, across the screen but there's a bracket holding it in plastic bracket has some clips up under it um, you can pretty much see it after you look at it just undo the little tabs up under there and uh, fortunately for us this is all one piece some of those diffuser brackets are coming four pieces, one on each side, but, but this one is actually just one piece. You can use your fingernail or just use a small, um, you know, flathead and just, or prior to it, just kind of get those tabs up. Okay, like I said, it's all one piece. I did mark it so I know which corner goes and uh, you know which corner goes where. <clears throat> now we actually have uh, actually I think it's four screens. There's a big thick one on the bottom, and there's like three more on top. Uh, make sure they are all in order when you. you know, so I, I'll just keep those all together when I pull it off. Now this is the part that I hate. <laughs> Um, pulling those studs off, those tabs that actually support the uh, screen. Uh, just go to the bottom, use some pliers, push the little smaller ones out. And for those larger tabs, tabs with, with the three studs on them, you're going to have to slide those out. Uh, they only slide out one way. So you can just lift one end up and just kind of like slide it out to the right, like so. Sometimes these things are a pain. Uh, if you happen to break one, like wait, while you're checking it out, uh, do not put it back in the TV because what's going to happen is it's going to um, fall to the bottom of the TV after you put it back together and you're going to see like a dark spot, you know. Um, in the, in the image so as long as most of them are in there you're good uh, when, you, when you're reassembling them and one thing I hate about these TVs is that the actual lens covers that they use for the LEDs they they are not glued in good and they will fall off if you just like touch them or bump them so make sure you got uh, some super glue handy uh, if you're replacing individual LEDs okay so we definitely got our white paper off and the purpose of that is so we can check our LEDs or the lines and see which one is bad. And as you can see, there's a uh, two lines there. That's the first line on top with the two LED strips, and the second line goes to the two LED strips on the bottom. And there's a like a little jumper wire at the end of each one. So there is a plus and minus on the strip and I'll just put my meter on there 
and that strip is staying pretty much lit there are a few out so like I said it's really like about 70 volts and if I go to the top one uh, as you can see uh, it is flashing so there that is our bad strip or strips I do recommend replacing the strips um, the entire strips or the two that are bad just order them off of shop Jimmy or eBay um, but if you want to do individual checking for LEDs uh, because this particular set does not have test points for each LED I had to actually scrape off the trace on each side of the LED and find out uh, which LED um, is the bad one Okay, bro, what you waiting on? There we go, okay. Just find out which side is positive and just go down the line until you find the one that's jumping around or whatever. So that's pretty much about it, guys. I'm just uh, um, showing you the, the, the uh, disassembly process of this TV. Um, just put it back the same way. I don't think I need to show you guys how to put it back the same way you took it apart. Put the paper back on and uh, put your studs back in there put it on your diffuser screens put the black black bracket around the diffuser screens and put on your screen and your outer bezel and, and that's pretty much about it looks like I found our bad one yeah as you can see that's another bad one so it's probably about one or two actually bad ones that are making the TV flash on and off and so, uh, hey guys, um, <laughs> see how easy that falls off? Well, uh, thank you guys for watching, and uh, make sure that you subscribe and uh, like the video, and I'll see you soon. Big dog out.